Well, hello and welcome back to the Shadow Proclamation, or welcome back if you watched it before, or if you're here for the first time, welcome, welcome at new. Uh, my name is Paul and I'm joined as always by my partner in crime, Thomas. And we're about to watch episode three of The Ambassadors of Death. We've had a bit of a break since last night, it's been a week or so, hasn't it? So um, It has. We've really enjoyed it so far though, haven't we? Hello, really enjoyed it. Oh, what was the name of that guy? That guy is Barney. Are you there, Barney? Oh, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, that's it. Oh, this was a great <laughs> cliffhanger. The sting. You are back at space control. Cut it open. They are not cleared for re entry. Ah, uh, yes, this is a bit like Who Turned Out the Lights, wasn't it? Yeah. Or Clem Fandango, oh. can you hear me? Will you clear us for re entry? Yes, I can hear you, Clem Fandango. And this is when the doctor says, "Cut is open." Yeah. How many beans make five? Close space control. This is recovery seven. Will you clear us for re-entry? And light. Not cleared for re-entry. Right. Cut it open. Oh, it's just good, isn't it? It works really well, actually, having the sting there again, doesn't it? After the recap. Yeah. That works really well. Oh, there's a little. Of that sound. Did you get any Easter eggs, Paul? I did. Yep. I got I've a got lint a, one. Oh, a lint one. I've yeah. got an orange twirl. Oh, very nice. Did you see doctors have advised you only, you don't eat a whole one in one sitting? Oh, really? Why? Yeah. Well, apparently it's not good for you. <laughs> in, in news. <laughs> apparently Easter eggs are not good for you in, in, in breaking news. <laughs> was that announced recently? Or was that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was like in the, on the news. No. <laughs> just in case... So we got war in Europe, you know, war in the Middle East, but uh, the important news is don't eat a whole Easter egg in one sitting. <laughs> People would be chomping their entire <laughs> hollow Easter egg in one go. So look at the colour here, it's a bit ropey, isn't it? Mm. So I don't know if you've seen in the comments people have said about sort of having black and white copies and stuff like that and how they've... They tried to recolorize things, so you can kind of see a bit like we saw in Silurians, wasn't it? Some of the bleed and the bleed between things. The bleeding image. Mm. You know, blood oranges, right? Have you ever had one? Uh, I don't think I have. I, I know someone who went into a market and said, "Excuse me." Does anyone here have the bloody oranges? <laughs> <laughs> and they just meant blood oranges, but... <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> It'll be interesting to see what these episodes look like when they finally get round to releasing the Season 7 Blu-rays. Because they often do quite a lot of work restoration-wise then. Mm. I wonder kind of the level it gets. A spearhead from space will look amazing, because it's all shot on film. So that'll actually be... Proper HD, won't it? No, no. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be gorgeous. I wonder if they can use AI to clear it up now. A lot of people were saying about the Silurians, they'd like to see AI used to remove the music and give it a better soundtrack. Not no. big fans of the crumb horn, apparently. You're wrong. The crumb <laughs> horn is what makes that story. <laughs> And <laughs> is Liz dressed as a cowgirl? But she. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see. <laughs> see what, Jeff? Can you see it? Oh, he. <laughs> Howdy, partners. <laughs> yeah, what is she wearing? To tell him was under strict orders to make sure you didn't have access to the computer. Survive. I think that's what the kids would say these days. Yeah, I say that way too much. <laughs> The other thing I say too much is fares. Fares? As yeah, in like fair play? Like, oh, fares. What, as for fair play? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I just say fair play. <laughs> I used to say, I used to say Blatos a lot. Blatos? Sort of like, blatantly. <laughs> yeah, Blatos. <laughs> He was a Greek philosopher, wasn't he? <laughs> so we've got another plague storyline here. Yeah. It's the second in as many stories, isn't it? 
question of the right hand. <sighs> yes. Good. Well, I hope this explanation has eased your mind, gentlemen. Well, it hasn't eased mine. Spearhead from space. Uh, no, that didn't have a plague, did it? It had a plague of the mind, arguably. <laughs> yes. Such an old school sort of van design, that, isn't it? Yeah, that's really nice. Don't make things like that anymore. See, again, this is another thing. I, I say it every episode now, but the, the, what you get so much of in the Pertwee era is this location stuff. Outside. Yeah. Looks really good. Scale. Just... Like even There's on an so overcast day like this, it's it's atmospheric. Yeah, it adds to it. Yeah, and they always seem to find good locations like this that you know you don't feel that you would just find. These days, you would certainly wouldn't see a lot of places that look like that anymore. Yeah, I suppose it was more common in those days. But another great location. Look at that. Yeah. Kind of quarry. Uh, yeah, the great big. Lake there, you know, all part of the quarry. It's all. I mean, it's Doctor Who is. I mean, it's a running joke that they just film in quarries all the time. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a good quarry. Yeah. You'll get no quarrel from me. <laughs> and at the end of the day, nothing set in stone. <laughs> Honestly, half of the episode could just be this, and I'd I'd be here for it. Look at that! I love a nice bit of kit. Yeah, it's like an episode of one of those Fred Dibner things, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Really nice, eerie score, actually. Yeah. Oh. Oh, nice. That's very Bond, isn't it? Oh, look at so, that. Look at that. That was well done. How did it do that? Well, I mean. <laughs> Presumably advanced tech within the context of the story, but do you reckon that was a? Yeah, the the way it wiped down. That yeah, it's very cool. impressive. I don't know what came down in recovery seven, but it certainly wasn't human. Ooh. Nice. That was well delivered as well. Felt a bit like it was almost going to a cliffhanger, but. Yeah, this guy looks a bit like Sheldon. He was in the Tomb of the Cybermen, wasn't he? Was he? You've got your instructions. This guy. No, the the bald guy. The bald guy. I thought they took that away from you. Didn't he get like? I think Cleeg shot him or something at one point. Ah. I'm pretty sure it's him. You have a very good eye for the actors. Yeah, this guy was in Tomb of the Cybermen. He's like, look, look at the honeycomb. They're moving. It's that dude. <laughs> oh, that was incredibly strong, wasn't it? Yeah, he did, and it was a good bit of stunt work as well. He he moved quite well through the air. Lock the door. <laughs> it's all right. I want to help you. Can't you understand? I want to help you. I do wonder whether silence in the library did take some inspiration from this. Hmm. Hey, all turned out at the lights. What happened there? It kind of yeah. fainted. Did did a bit. All right, I'll take care of more of it. I have a theory that so you know how um, Troughton era was based under siege. Yeah. I reckon Pertwee era is siege under base. <laughs> Doctor? Or are you just going to be like Earth under siege? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. That's true, actually. Yeah, the stakes are pretty high in each story, aren't they? Yeah, it's true. And this is all happened in quick succession because it's all pretty much in the same place on Earth with the Brigadier. So like, this is a busy patch in the Brigadier's life, isn't it? Oh, nice music. This is a jaunty car chase music. <laughs> They're having a bit of fun here.
Yeah, this sounds like a very obvious point, but obviously we haven't actually had any time travel in this season so far, have we? No, none at all. We haven't even had any space travel, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless so, you count these astronauts and things arriving from space, but... It's not adventures in time and space, it's adventures. <laughs> in, adventures in Hertfordshire. But it still feels like <laughs> Doctor Who, weirdly. Yeah, I think so. Even though we haven't been, I can understand if people want to make that criticism. We haven't been getting any TARDIS action, but very much the Doctor, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> she's at the weir again. These are great locations. Yeah, very, you know, just nice and visual. Striking, distinctive. She's not going to jump in, is she? It's like a fugitive, this. Oh. Oh, they're going to throw her in. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean. Oh, crumbs. Oh, she's gone over the top. What a cliffhanger. Literally. Wow. Literally a, a hanger. We are hanger. <laughs> we are hanger. Can I just watch that shot again? That was awesome. I'm pretty Stump sure. Work on it. Can you? I'm pretty sure that's that's not her going over the railing. I mean, it can't be, can it? <laughs> you do a freeze frame when she goes over. This is the best bit. This guy. <laughs> that guy. Oh. <laughs> Here then, we go. Look, you can see him dangling still. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's hard to see. I thought it was going to be like um, clearly a man, like <laughs> just a stunt man, but uh... <laughs> I just something quite funny about it because she kind of it looks like she jumps. She isn't pushed. Like, watch this to begin with. She's climbing over the railing. Sort. Of, oh no, he does. It doesn't. She just just. Go straight over, yeah. Maybe that's part of the resolution. Maybe she's a gymnast and she's going to hang and then grab him with her feet and throw him over, like yeah, in a in a spectacular gymnastic move worthy of Rose Tyler's gymnastic career. <laughs> Which that never really came back, did it? Oh, that's After true. Episode one. Yeah, forgot about that. Like here what I am knocking. She worked in knocking Ryan's dyspraxia and. Uh, them forgetting all about that, but forgot about Rose being a gymnast, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, I think it has been a while since we watched the previous one. The previous cliffhanger was so good, I didn't really know what it was gonna, how it was gonna continue with it. Um, yeah, the the whole cut, the capsule open, but they've they've maintained the mystery. I mean, those people in the in the spacesuits who, you know he begins to kind of awaken and then is quite violent, but then passes out and then mm. they're like, Oh, they need more radiation. Yeah. And you've got bodies being buried in a quarry and Liz's little ch chase at the end and being thrown in, in off the weir. So yeah, all good, good, good action. Like quite a lot of action in there, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, there's loads of stuff in it, isn't there? Um, it's, I, I mean, I would say maybe it didn't, it, it wasn't quite as action packed as the first, yeah, two, particularly because that last one we had the, uh, the rec you know, the recovery seven being put on the truck and being taken to the space center and the helicopter men coming down with masks and all yeah. that. Um, but I thought, it was, I thought it was still very enjoyable, and I, I, I completely, you know, I think it's really. The idea of having the doctor say, you know, they never came down. The astronauts are still in orbit. You're going, well, who are these figures? And then this, you know, the fact that they've got this massive amount of radiation and then they need more radiation to sort of be invigorated um, is a really nice idea. Couple that with all the great kind of stuff you get in this era of the, the quarries and the visual stuff, location shooting. Um, I mean, you could, because I can't think of any Troughton story almost. There's very few Troughton and Hartnell stories where you get lots of great location shooting like that. You get little bits, don't you? There's a there's a um, an ice warrior walking across the heath or whatever, and there's some shots of the Daleks in London in Daleks Invasion of Earth and stuff like that. There are bits here and there, but in the in the what we've seen so far, the Pertwee era, it just keeps coming, doesn't it? Just location, location, location. Location. That's what it is. So. <laughs> 
and I love it. I love the feel of it. So, and yeah. the van, oh. the van with its little spinning number plates and change of signage on the side was really neatly done. So, um, that was yeah. pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, it happened in the blink of an eye. That sign on the side. I don't know whether that was a practical effect or what. Like, yeah, because um, I wasn't really expecting it, so I wasn't paying much attention. So it just kind of happened. I was like, oh, it was almost um, like it did it because. It, yeah, it kind of appeared in like three stages or something. So maybe they painted a bit and then, you know, and then painted a bit more and then cut those bits out. And then it just, but it was, it was it really moving. Well was it moving at the time? I have a feeling it was stationary, wasn't it? Uh, can no, have a look. Thing again? It, was it just off? Oh, right, around here, somewhere, just around there. Yep. Because that would be even more impressive. Oh, it's you know, just saying? before it starts moving. It's just yeah. a jump, right? It's just. A, I think it is just but a it, jump like that when you see it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you can see a couple. But it of, kind of appears in like a couple of stages, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it kind of wipes d down. Yeah, yeah. But it's really nice. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, effective. The the espionage van that can disguise. And of course, you've got to remember as well that, like back in the back in the day when this was shown, you would have seen it quickly and once, and then it, you move on. You wouldn't have been going back analysing it and going, "Oh, well, how did that work?" Like, um, like we did. going off the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Liz throwing herself over the barrier. That's a good point. Actually, this might sound like an obvious point, but at this stage, you couldn't buy. Doctor Who to rewatch, could you? No, no, I don't think VHS the VHS wasn't a thing yet. No, not until the I don't think until the eighties. So yeah, that's a really weird thought, isn't it? You you literally you watch it, your eyes would be glued to the screen, and then it's like I might never see that Doctor Who episode ever again. And for and some you, of them, if it went missing, yeah, absolutely true. Yeah, and if you missed a week. Yeah. There's no catch up. There's no watching it on iPlayer. There's no going and renting the DVD or the video um, because none of that has even been thought of and dreamt up at this point, really. So um, it's not until, yeah, sometime in the 80s because they start releasing things. and But of course, everything isn't, even when stuff starts to come out on video and it's not all out at once, you know, it's taking time. It took years and years and years to release the videos. Um, yeah. And, you know, of course, as time went on as well, VHS and having a video player in your house was becoming more common. But um, when it first, I guess when that first happened, yeah, because I think, I think again, someone in the comments will correct me. There's a, there's a story in the Tom Baker era, which is called, um, it's not a spoiler or anything, it's called Revenge of the Cybermen. Um, and I think that may have been the first ever video that came out sometime in the eighties. Okay. And I think someone said at the time it would cost the equivalent of about 50 quid, <laughs> you know? Wow. So, um, I might be wrong on that. It was like 30, maybe it's 30 quid or 50 quid, but someone, I'm sure someone will know. Um, but it just shows you it was a completely different thing, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. But yeah. still enjoying it. So in this story, enjoying it so far, we're halfway through, we're not halfway through our weeks. It's seven parts. Um, yeah. but we're getting there. Um, but it's still, still holding my interest. I think, um, yeah, I'm still too. keen. Still keen on it. See where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. And um, do let us know what you think in the comments and in our Discord as well, or you can join in the, the link below. And um, we'll be back soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Goodbye.